Hey Misfits, it's Elise. Welcome back to our channel. This week we're doing what not to do slash what to do in blank as our topic. Um, Derek took my idea about cons and cosplay. I have a convention coming up and I'm going to be putting that on my personal channel, Elise the ET. So my video is going to be what not to do to retail workers because I feel like this should be common knowledge but people don't know or people don't understand maybe they've never had the retail struggle of like making minimum wage and just trying to get by like it's a lot it's it's people suck people really do suck and it's like the general public is one of the hardest type of things to work in and people just knock your hustle or they're like oh they make you money Ugh, they're not motivated Ugh, like this is your job why do you get aggravated like you get aggravated no matter what you do in life. So, this is my TED Talk, and I hope you enjoy. I'm out of breath already. Number one is put your phone down when you're checking out. So this applies to when you're a cashier. I've been a cashier at like every place, and like Walmart, I'm still one even though I'm cap two, because I was coded as a cashier. So, if you want to be wrung out by a person and get the customer service experience, right, of having a face-to-face -face ringing out session, if you will, Please put your phone down. Stop like ignoring me because that would be rude if I was giving, you were giving me a service and you were ignoring me. It would be totally different if the tables were turned. But somehow in retail, that doesn't matter. So if you want stuff bagged a certain way or you want separate transactions or this, that, and the other thing, and you know, I got to move quickly because the lines are ridiculous and to about, you know, 90% of the people, if they ignore me, it means they don't really have a preference of how they want their stuff bagged or they're just getting one transaction, X, Y, Z, and then they're out of there. That is fine. Some people just don't like to talk. I I'd talk to the wall if it fucking talk back. Hi, wall. How you doing? Right? So... If you want, if I do like your $500 worth of merchandise and then you want to take stuff off or you want separate bags or you want separate transactions, I got to get the customer service manager to turn their key and erase everything and do it again because you didn't give me two seconds, you know, for me to ask how your, your day is or whatever and how do you want your stuff bagged because by that point I have to assume because I have lines out the wazoo. So... If you're like, if I do $500 worth of merchandise, XYZ, and then you want everything in a separate transaction so you can use a separate card, well, too bad. Like, Jesus Christ. Go to self-checkout if you need to fight with your boyfriend or yell at your kids while you're in line. Like, go to self-checkout. That is what it's for. Okay? Okay. Fuck. I, this camera is still taking some getting used to. So, number two... Stop making us the babysitter when you want to shop. By the way, this is a BuzzFeed article. Like, people have left their children in carts and literally just walked away and said, I'll be right back. Like, no. What the fuck? I'm like, I used to at Target, like, I guess because it was a different clientele. You know, I'd be like, ma'am, you can't do that. And then they'd walk away and I would just be standing there out of guilt. If I'm not doing something for two seconds, I get yelled at at Walmart. They're very like, go, 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 do your job, do your job. Elise, why are you standing there? Uh, 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 come help me. Imagine I have to help customers and then because you're irresponsible, I have to watch your two-year-old. Like, it's already in our employee things, like our little paperwork that we do not babysit and watch children, right? So what I do <laughs> is if someone says, oh, like, I want to go grab something over there. Can you watch my kid? I'm like, no. Why? Like, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, because we, it's literally in our job description. So if you walk away from your child, I'm calling DCF because I'm a mandated reporter, which I am. I took the course for it. <laughs> I did it. Right? I'm like, I'm a mandated reporter, so I could just call DCF on you and say you left your kid in Walmart. So your move, lady. And then all of a sudden they take your kid. Like, it's, I don't have to do that with everyone. It's just certain customers that, like, always try that thing. It's just like, stop. Like, would you leave your kid anywhere else? No, didn't think so. Would you leave your kid on the street and tell him I'll be right back? Usually not. So, like, why would you leave a two-year-old with a random stranger? I could kidnap your kid. I could literally, like, tell your kid that everything they learned is wrong and that they should kill their parents. Like, I don't know. So don't do that to people because, like, People aren't just children people in general, too. Like, I'm not a child person. I don't really... I used to be a teacher, so this is ironic. But, like, I, I don't want to be left with other people's children. It's why I left teaching. Okay? The best birth control is working in retail. Because it makes you, like, nope, no kids. 
get away. So, yeah, that's what I do. I tell people I'm going to call DCF because you left your kid in Walmart. So, or wherever you work. It works. Alright, the second one is when people want to use your discount card and they're not an employee. Like, literally customers. This one guy forgot his discount card and I guess he worked at a Walmart. But, like, we had no liable proof. And he asked me if he could use my discount card. And I'm like, oh. Because say if I rang them out and I slid it, it literally says cannot use. So first of all, no. It wouldn't work if I rang you out with it or anyone else. I just tell them that. But like, you know, it won't work if I ring you out. Second of all, you're not on my tax form. If you are not on my 1040 EZ and you're not my spouse or my children, you cannot legally use it. Third of all, who the fuck are you? <laughs> Fourth of all, I could get fired because that's fraudulent, according to Walmart. So... They're like, oh, I don't care. I'm like, well, I'm not losing my job because you're annoying. Like, go away. And then they start whining. And like, I had a lady who wanted to order Ambi Fade Cream. She needed like 25 of them because I guess she's like a beauty representative or something. Like, she was having like a beauty party. We only had two. So I'm like, well, we could or I could help you order it online. And then she's like, great. And then like, I showed her how much it cost because she was just like, oh, how much would that cost total? Because like, you know, I don't do math in my head like that. It's like, oh, great, let's just order it on your phone. I'm like, I would be storing your credit card information, which is already a red flag. Can't do that. We're not allowed to do that. Second of all, if you try to repay me in the form of cash on camera, I get canned for taking a bribe or money because there's no tips at Walmart. And then my discount card's on there. And I told her, my, my, my work information's on there, and you can't use it. It's only for me. And she's like, oh, I'd like the discount. I'm like, well, then work for Walmart because that's literally the only way you're allowed to use it. And then she's like, oh, like, I want the, 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 what was it? I think it was $10 off total or something. Like, oh, like, that's $10 off for me. This is great. You can't use it. Stop fucking asking, okay? Like, literally, I had to go on a 20-minute thing. And she's like, well, how can I order it then? I'm like, on your own device. We're not allowed to order for you. We don't have ordering devices. This isn't Target. <laughs> oh, can Target order it for me? Yes, they have something called a smart device, and they literally have a card reader on it. We don't. So stop asking me because I'm gonna get candor in trouble because you're an idiot and I don't trust anyone So don't ask me my own parents can't even use mine and they're pissed They were like, what do you mean? I can't use it. I'm like because you're not on my tax form if it is not a lease insert middle and last name here and It's on like your card and it says my mom or dad's name They're gonna know I let them use it because it's my parents like hello common sense I don't know why my demon voice came out. That's weird. When you... I already did this one. When you have a problem with us just doing your job. So this happens a lot. Like, I'll be, like, doing the, um, the truck push or, like, the truck load and putting all the stuff out. Can you do that later? You're in my way. Like, no, lady. It's literally when the truck comes and when my boss says we do it. You are not my boss. You're not my employer. You do not sign my check. I'm sorry I'm in your way and I'm trying to work around you, but you're literally just being annoying right now. And I'm like, here's my store boss's name, phone number, and email. Here you go. Like, ugh. Like, no. We can't just rearrange when we do our stuff because you're inconvenienced. Like, stores have, they have policies and they have routines. Our truck comes at like 2 o'clock every day. Our, we do like the freight from 2 to 11 every day and then if there's leftover it's overnight overnight's mostly doing modulars But they help when there's a big truck like we had three yesterday fucking three trucks and it was Sprinting trying to put stuff away. I was on the register. I was at the service desk. They put me everywhere So it's like no, I cannot rearrange my schedule because you're inconvenienced if you have a legit complaint call 1-800-WALMART like Oh, that's all I could do? Yes, that's all you could do. Like, hello. <laughs> oh, it's so annoying. So don't be one of those people. When you toss your card or money at us. This, I cannot stand as a cashier because a lot of things could go wrong. I had a guy throw money on the table because he was mad or whatever because, quote unquote, um, you know, like, he was trying to pick up money, but he had a passport from, like, Portugal. So then, like, he said he was, like, he lives here, like, a little bit. Like, he lives at his brother's house. So, like, my worker, which is what you're supposed to do, just ask for a piece of mail. So, he had to, like, go grab a piece of mail. He left, like, or no, he was trying to send money. So, he left quite a few hundred dollars on the table. And, like, that's already dangerous. And my worker didn't even see this other guy just literally go and take it. 
Like, he had something on the table, I guess. He, like, put a gift card down, and he used that to, like, grab it real quick. And she didn't even see, because, like, you have a line of people. You have other shit to do. So this is a lesson to you if you just leave money on the counter. He came back, and his $400 was missing, and he tried to say that my worker took it. And I'm like, sir, if you do not stop screaming, I'm going to have to call the cops, because I need to get you to get off the premises. She stole my money! And he's all screaming. They're screaming in Spanish, and I'm like, oh, my God. I'm like, if you leave your money on the counter, it is no one's fault. Because someone could steal it. Well, I don't want to see the security tape. Well, actually, legally, we don't have to show you the security tape. You know, you, I'm like, you can file a police report, and then they watch the security tape. You do not get to do that. Oh, like he was screaming. So, literally, a guy took it within two seconds because he threw a fit and threw it on the table like a child. So, let that be a lesson to you. Because someone could steal your money, and then if it's like a register situation there's a conveyor belt so if you put your money on the conveyor belt it could get stuck in the conveyor belt and then you can't use the money because it's torn or missing so don't do that because then your money's taken like someone's uh, debit card they put it on there actually it got stuck in there and then I'm like you broke my freaking conveyor belt and now you can't use your debit card so I hope you learned oh you're gonna make it work um no <laughs> I could try, but if the chip is damaged, it's not going to let me. So good luck with that. The other scenario is when you have your hand out for the cash. You know, they're counting their money, and then they literally put it, like, down somewhere else. Like, that is rude. Like, I don't... Some people, it doesn't bother them, but most cashiers, that bothers them. If I'm like this or like this because you're supposed to hand me cash... You do not put it, like, down on the table or somewhere else where I can't, like, grab it. Like, that's just rude. That's like, it's like waving a bone in front of a dog, you know? And then just like, bleh, bleh, and not in a playful way. That's just like, yeah, I can't have it. Like, excuse me, like, I'm not going to work for your $2 for that stupid Hershey bar that you bought. Like, hope someone steals your money because then you have to pay again. <laughs> like. Don't do this to people. Like, would you, if a pizza guy came and he gave you your pizza, would you throw it on the porch and make him go get it? No. Don't think so. Hello? Alright, I'm fucking sweating. So, my camera died. <laughs> when you just toss everything everywhere, like it's your own house. I have problems with this because it's unsafe. Someone could fall or trip. It makes my aisle look dirty and messy, and then by that logic to my supervisor or my assistant manager oh well you made a mess because you left it here uh, so you're getting me in trouble and then if it's something perishable or like that's broken in the middle of the aisle like that's a loss to us especially like if you buy milk and then you decide you don't want it and you put it on the corner of a random shelf and just keep walking like now we can't sell the damn milk it smells like moldy ass milk like, what the fuck? Like, I don't know. My parents, they said, if you're doing big grocery shopping, do your perishables last. Because then, like, you get it home and it's colder. And then if you change your mind, at least it's, like, the end of your shopping trip. And it's not like you have it in the cart for 20 minutes. Because that's also gross. Like, think about it. Say you get milk, you're in the store for an hour. It's been out of the fridge for an hour. <laughs> that's fucking nasty. So if you leave, a, like, chicken nuggets, like, in the middle of HBA, like, oh, I don't need it. Well, they're soggy and and warm and unsellable now, thanks. Like, ugh, like it's gross. Like, if you have a Cumberland Farms coffee and you brought it with you, all you have to do is keep it in your cart until you get to a garbage can. Like, it's not rocket science. Like, I don't understand. Like, people literally will get, like, their big, like, McDonald's co coffee or cup and, like, leave it in the middle mile or on a shelf. And it's like, that is not where it goes. You know where it goes. Shame on you. So... No littering and it's fucking annoying. <laughs> and that going back to the other thing where you don't put things back where you found it, nine times out of ten it's habitual people who shop there like all the time. They know where it goes so that's a slap in the face to us. But if you honestly don't know where it goes or it's like too much of a thing for you, you could ask nicely like, hey, can I put this in your car? Or, um, I don't want this anymore. Can you put it back for me? Like, it's not that hard. And then at the register, you could just have them like... The cashier will take it, and they put it in a little cart, and it goes to the back, and then it, it's in the right place after that. So, like, don't put, like, a bouncer for a toddler in the middle of jewelry. Like, it just makes no sense. Like, we have price scanners, and when something's too expensive, they just leave it at the scanner. Like, that is so annoying. <laughs> like, it's a hazard. Then it's a fire hazard. So you're causing a lot of issues. And if it's perishable food, that's even worse. We lose money. 
so stop doing that. This one is weird, but it happens all the time. When you ignore all the signs. So, say it's like buy $50 worth of grocery items and you get a $5 gift card. If you only spend $49.97, you're not getting the gift card. Like, it's automatic and it's prompted by the register. And if it's a coupon one where you scan it, it's going to say not enough eligible items. So, if you can't read or you're ignoring the sign, it's not going to just... You're not just going to get one because it's like a thing to do like the fuck like no like read the sign understand the sign like it's not hard if it says excludes travel size for the buy one get one do not pick a travel sized item like uh, hello <laughs> this one and people not reading their coupons this gets on my nerves too because say you're by what's a good one say it's a coupon for rimmel and it's all Rimmel mascaras and eyeliners, and you come with like a powder compact, you can't get the dollar off on the compact. If it says one dollar off the next product, and it says what it's for, and if it says like eyeliner mascara only, and you show up with a powder, it's not going to be the same thing, and no, I'm not overriding it, because the register tells me what to do. In Walmart's GLMS thingy, it just says, follow the prompts of the register, and that's it. No exceptions, like Jesus Christ, like, you are not an exception. Ah, like, if it's a mistake on the shelf, that is a totally different story, but like, if you do not read your coupons where it says, you know, $5 off Infamil if you buy two, you only buy one, you're not getting $5 off. Like, if it says excludes travel size, do not pick a travel size item. Ah, okay. Okay, so this one applies when you're returning something. When you try to teach us about our jobs or make us do jobs a certain way, like you know everything. So, say we, we have a policy, 15 days to return an air mattress, no exceptions. And it has to be unused for a refund, unopened, completely unopened. We can tell when you open it, you know, if you inflated it, it's exchange only, right? So, if you come in and it's day 16 and it's clearly used, you cannot return it. You cannot exchange. It literally says it in the areas where you pick it up. So again, you're not reading, but then they go into, oh, well, I worked retail and I would let them return it. I'm like, really, would you? Because you're violating policy, so that's not being a good retail worker. Second of all, <laughs> I'm not gonna break policy because you're upset and because, quote unquote, you've worked retail and, oh, I know how this goes. And if it's the same reoccurring problem at the same store, please stop shopping here. Like, it's not that hard. <laughs> So, just because you've worked retail before doesn't mean you could boss me around. Like, I've had customers say that I don't zone correctly. And I'm like, excuse me, how the fuck do you zone incorrectly? You pull everything forward and you cover the diamonds. <laughs> like, you want to work here? Great. There, you apply at walmart.com slash careers or careers at careers.walmart.com. I think that's what the URL is. Stop doing that. It makes someone mad. It makes their whole day annoying. You already make minimum wage and you hate your job and nine times out of ten your managers treat you like shit. So it's like stop. Like just stop. Alright. Here it is. This one is weird. It doesn't happen to me a lot but it's like when you play the name or the race game. If you cannot pronounce my name, like I have a pretty common name. <laughs> but like you know. It's already, like, annoying if you have an exotic name or whatever it may be. And then they're like, oh, how do you say that? Oh, it's pretty, uh, and you make it all about their name or... That's already awkward and annoying because if you got a foreign name, like... Don't, like, fetishize somebody for their name. That's weird. Or There's also one about race. I gotta read that, though. Oh, God. So, like, I have coworkers that have certain ethnic names like I have a coworker that has an Arab name oh like my friend's Arab his name is blank do you know them like that's weird <laughs> like don't fetishize people's names or assume like they know somebody because they're a certain race or don't um ask what someone's ethnicity is honestly like if you don't know them or like it's weird like I had a guy because I was wearing my unique so like dolly lens contacts and I look androgynous to begin with He's like, oh, like, what race are you? I'm like, sir, I'm Caucasian. <laughs> I am Italian. If that, like, why do you need to know, though? Like, are you trying to clone me? Like, why do you need to know my race? Like, that's weird. It's like, oh, like, well, you don't look Italian. And that already is rude and disrespectful. I'm like, sir, because he said I'm too pale to be Italian. I'm like, sir, 
Because he said he was Italian. And, like, he wasn't that much darker than me. So I'm just like, dude, you are, like, one foundation shade above me. So you're fucking weird. I'm like, sir, my family's from the mountainous region of Italy. And northern Italy in general is pretty fair-skinned. The only, like, the, the, the southern province is where people are a little more tan. Like, not everyone's Sicilian dark. Like, you're Italian. You're not that much darker than me. You know, I just said, my family's from northern Italy. They're very fair up there. Oh, well. Are you mixed with something else? I'm like, yes, I'm also Irish, but again, that is not your concern. Like, I could have just told him to fuck off and I'm not telling him, because I'm done with people doing that. It was like an old man. <laughs> like, some old guy. He's like, oh, well, that's why you're fair. I'm like, actually, my mom is tan and she's Irish, so figure that one out. She's actually olive-skinned and full Irish. Like, don't do that to people. It's rude, it's weird, it stop. <laughs> Next one. When you try to justify what you're doing, oh, by saying you've worked retail before. So say Walmart has a policy, right? You can only return an item, let's say air mattresses, because I dealt with this the most. You only have 15 days to return an unopened air mattress. So if it's been opened, it's exchange only, but it has to be within the 15 days. And if it's past that and it's open, you're not getting your refund. Like, that's just it. It's a state of Connecticut policy. And it's, like, a whole thing because they can't really be recycled properly because there's, like, they're wasteful in a way because of the material. They go into landfill. So, you know, they try to avoid the whole thing. And then you can't just return a used air mattress because that's fucking unsanitary, right? You could have roaches or some shit and, like, give it to someone else. Like, that's completely disgusting. So... Even if it's unopened, we have to open and check. Like, I had a guy call the cops on us because we wouldn't take his crusty old air mattress that's, like, two years old. Like, you know? Oh, I just want store credit. Oh, uh, like, no. Get the fuck out, right? <laughs> so, don't try to justify or try to make me bend policy because, quote-unquote, I worked retail before and I, they, they, blah, 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 has never done this. Or, oh, I would do it for a customer. I'm like, well, you're an idiot. Because it literally says what we're supposed to do online and on the counter. If you have a problem with that, call 1-800-WALMART. Like, the fuck? Like, I, uh, it's mostly to get what peop what you want. And it's like, if you worked retail and you were an actual good employee or like someone who understands, you would know that you just, you, you done goofed. You gotta keep it. It is what it is. You could sell it to a friend maybe, but like, stop trying to justify shit because you've worked retail. We've all worked a shitty job and that doesn't mean shit. <laughs> uh. Uh, what is this one? Oh, so if someone it comes in my line, right, and they ask, do they think that these, like, pants will fit me? I'm like, well, did you try them on? And they get mad. They want me to do the guesswork just by looking at them in a pair of pants that it'll fit them. Like, go to the fitting room. Like, Jesus Christ. That's my rant for that one. When you make those free jokes. I hate the free jokes. If something doesn't scan, it must be free. Like, you make me want to punch you in the face, but I need this job, so I can't. Like, nine times out of ten, if something doesn't scan, I can either key in the barcode, or I could key it in somewhere else, because it'll be on the... If it's a shirt and then the tag is missing, it's in the, the flap. So, it's not free. Oh, well, it's supposed to be free. No, you asshole. For fuck's sake, that's why they put two or three UPCs on a shirt, because people try to rip them off all the time for that reason. Right, so then I key it in, and it's all, it's honestly just annoying. It's worse than dad jokes. Like, if I scan something and it doesn't work, oh, it must be free, that's, that's referring to commodity. Commodity items are food items that do not scan correctly. So, say a bag of Doritos is $1.25 and it comes up $1.50, and it's clearly in the price thing as $1.25. We have to give you one for free plus another one. So like that item plus another free. But it only applies to food. So if it's not food, it, you do not get commodity. You, you do not get commodity for an iPod. You don't get it for a shirt. My store doesn't even do toilet paper. Which I honestly think that's fucked up. Because some places do toilet paper and paper towels. We don't. So that's up to a store as well. We only do food. So no, commodity does not apply to other things. Like if it doesn't scan and it's a thing of cotton candy or whatever the hell we sell at the front end, we have to give it to you, whatever. X, Y, Z, because we're trying not to lose all our inventory. Oh, well, can I get like five more then? No, 
that's it, cut off. I'm not scanning anymore and giving it to you for free either, because that's already a loss of $3 for the store. So, stop, like, must be free, no, because nine times out of ten, I can find it and find the UPC and then you have to pay the normal price and if there is a mistake on the shelf that is a totally different story because pricing is a bitch. I get it. This one is annoying when people pull out the entitlement thing. So say you're helping like a Karen who um you know needs help looking for an item and that's fine. I like oh like she, it's already annoying when you come in a section like in HBA and you're asking me about like electronics like do you think I know electronics if I work in HBA? Like, that's already annoying. But that's a whole nother rant. So then, like, um, XYZ, you know, you're asking me, hey, I'm looking for this, um, towel rack for my bathroom. And it's like, I don't know all the aisles off the top of my head. I really only know HBA and cosmetics off the top of my head because that is where I work. So I'm like, oh, okay, let me look that up for you. And I'm helping out Karen and then someone's just like hey quick question where where's um where are popsicle sticks for crafts so I'm like oh that's in G23 and then that's the end of the story you do not as a Karen go she was talking to me first you bitch you were talking to me first why'd you talk to her like slow the fuck down <laughs> this is a world where people all talk at once and you are one of them so stop like cuz I've had people interrupt me with a customer and I'm trying to talk to them about something they're looking for like say they wanted um popsicle sticks I'm like well do you want ones with like craft kind or do you want like the cooking kind like for baking and stuff like that and then someone uh, comes in while you're in mid-sentence where are the towels like that's rude too like holy shit fuck <laughs> like in elementary school that was one of the things I did with the kids I'm like if I'm talking to Johnny please let me finish or just raise your hand and wait because that is rude because clearly they did not do this for all the adults in the world that do this right now and honestly if it's a quick question it's fine because like sometimes I'm like oh okay let me type I can type and talk to another person like I'm glad you think I can't because that's funny I can literally text somebody talk to my mom and walk down a flight of stairs and not get injured it's great I grew up in this generation, you know, that's what we have to do. I used to write papers for my next class on my fucking phone, walk into the mess hall for lunch. Like, it is what it is. So don't be one of those people screaming at me or another customer. Because nine times out of ten, you do the same thing. Like, I literally was helping my dad find something in the, in the pharmacy aisle. And it was just, hey, where are the hemorrhoid wipes? I'm like, oh, okay, come with me. And then, like... You know, my dad's allergic to lidocaine and stuff like that. So, you know, I'm trying to be a good worker. And this woman, I'm like talking to him. It's like, I need fabric cut right now. And I'm like, excuse me? <laughs> Slow the fuck down, lady. Because, like, I'm trying to service somebody. Like, yeah, it's my dad. But I'm like, I, I just, like, rolled my eyes. And I'm like, get that one because that one is lidocaine or this, that, and the other thing. And then he's like, oh, thanks. And he's like, damn, people are stupid. I'm like, I know. And then it's like they want all the attention on them and then someone asks for help and it's like, she is helping me. Like, just stop. Stop. You are the problem. Alright, I'm hungry. Next. When you judge the hustle. So, I've literally had people come up to me. Like, this woman wanted a bike in 98 degree weather. The humidity is crazy. And because I didn't have people to help me do the keys with the bikes, I had to do it. And like, I don't care as long as you're not an asshole about it. Like, literally, it's hot and I'm like, it's fucking hot out. I can't breathe. This sucks. And this lady's like, well, maybe you should have went to college and got an actual career. I'm like, I have a bachelor's degree, and it doesn't do me shit, lady. I make 11 an hour. Like, I was making a little more because I was a manager. So, I'm like, I make $13 an hour, man. And I have a bachelor's degree. That doesn't get you a job anymore. <laughs> that's like graduating high school. Second of all, that's really disrespectful. Like, I'm glad you have a job you like. Jesus Christ. Like, she literally told me that I should have went to school. I should, I should just get a better job. Like, I'm trying. <laughs> that is really rude. I had a lady tell her grandson, oh, like, that's why you got to go to college or you got to work a shitty job like her. And I'm like, excuse me. This is when I was in school. I'm like, this pays for my semester because my parents do not pay for me. I'm glad your parents paid for your college and your schooling and your food and your rentals and all this other shit. Your car. I pay for everything by my damn self, so fuck you, lady. Like, you know, I didn't say the fuck you part, but, you know, 
that's really disrespectful. Do not fucking say that to people. Like, don't say it to the server at your restaurant that you're eating at. Don't say it to the guy pumping your gas or the pizza guy. Like, yeah, they make minimum wage and our job already sucks. So just fucking stop. Like, you use these services whether you think you're above us or not. So, <clears throat> anyway. Oh, God. When you go wild with the samples. You see, Walmart doesn't have samples like that. Not at mine because we don't have, like, a deli or anything like that. Yeah, we definitely don't have this, but, like, I've seen this at BJ's when they have the sample tables, and, like, you get one little hot dog or whatever, because, like, they made a little hot dog thing, and you come back, like, you know the people who look different ten different times, and it's the same person trying to get samples? Like, stop. Like, they're supposed to be, like, one for everybody. You are one person, you are not everybody. Like, this would happen a lot with ice cream places. They do it all the time. Unless it's like a mall or something and they're literally just like, take the fucking samples because I overcooked or like I made the wrong thing and my boss is mad. Take them. Like that's totally different. But like this would happen when I did beauty events at Target. Like someone would want the whole beard, beard butter thing. And then it's like, no dude, you get to try it once and then you see if you want to buy it or not. That's it. Oh, so I can't try anything else. Try it again. No, dude, it's for everybody. Like, stop. Would you eat the whole dip on the entire table, just you, even though it's for everybody? That's really disrespectful. <laughs> we don't have that at Walmart, though. Thank fucking God. Oh, God. When you're just lying for no reason. So, say you've had a shirt for, like, 20 fucking years. Like, say you've had this shirt from Target for, like years and years it's old and you just you're broke so you go in and say you don't have a receipt and it has tags and then you just use your id and it's like it's old it's covered in like fucking stains and everything like what the fuck is wrong with you or like when people like what is it like say you spend over 50 dollars at walmart you need a receipt or i have to find the receipt so if you say i bought this yesterday and i cannot find it Chances are you did not buy it here, or you did not buy it yesterday, so stop lying for no reason. Like, just trying to get money is mostly what people want to do, so stop. Especially, oh, like, oh, like, my ID got stolen, so that I'm going to use my friend's ID. No, chances are your ID's maxed out and you're just lying to me, so go away. <laughs> What's this one? When you come in the store for the wrong reasons and then get mad at us. Okay, this doesn't happen at Walmart because it's a variety store, but say, like, I had a lady yesterday who needed perm shampoo, which I guess it's a special shampoo for when you have a perm and you're trying to wash it out. We do not sell this product. Like, I'm sorry, like, like, I looked online for it. It just says use a nourishing deep conditioner and, like, a shampoo that doesn't have a lot of chemicals in it. So I tried to show her, like, stuff you could do. She's like, no, like, there's a specific thing you buy. And blah, blah, blah. I'm like, well, then go to the hair store. There's a Sally's over there. <laughs> right? So do that. Go, go to the correct store. Like, go on Google and search. And when you search for something, do not just look in the search bar. Like, like that. Oh, I can't pull it up. But say you search for matches or something, right? What do we not have? <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, so say you want this bed set, right, that says Walmart has it, and you do not click on it to see if it's Walmart.com or if it's Walmart in store. And you come up to us saying we have it, because this happens a lot of times with beauty products and stuff and, like, anything. And then they're like, you, but you have it. And they're just like holding the phone like this. And it's just a search bar and it's not even clicked on. And then I'm like, and then it says online only, does not ship to store. We don't have it. What do you mean? You're looking for the wrong thing. You're looking for something that's online. Click on the link. You have to click on it first. Like, it's not rocket science. Like, this would happen at Target and Walmart. So it's mostly big box retail stores. So you're already mad and you can't buy it i try to tell you where something else is and they're like oh well you should just order this then and i'm like N no because it has to be something that sells if something does not sell in the store and it got moved to online we can't sell it anymore it's 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 literally corporate it's the corporate policy if like an eyeshadow shade does not sell at my store we put it online because it's like all right what's the point in ordering this and having it expire and then like 
Jane whatever comes in all pissed we don't have this aquamarine blue in the L'Oreal loose pigment eyeshadow like stop it's not our fault that you just don't know or like things happen or you think we sell it or we don't have it shit get over it move on all right this video is going to be way too long <laughs> i'm exhausted oh my god sweaty boob cash ladies it is summer or, or men, maybe if you're a man and you wear a dress, maybe this might apply to you. So if you keep your money in your bra and it's like sweaty boob season, I am not taking the money. I don't care if it's the only $20 you have. I'm not fucking taking it. It's gross. I had someone hand me money once that smelled like awful and it was covered in blood. I'm like, what the fuck is this? And like my boss said I could take it, but I was like, dude, I'm not fucking taking this. Hell no. <laughs> It like smelled like salty, sweaty blood. And I was like, she probably killed someone and then took this $20. <laughs> like, no. Especially, I just don't like sweaty tip money. It's not appropriate. Like, because then I have to touch it and it's fucking gross. And then I'm handing people money and handing them their bags all day long. So I'm contaminating other people because you're gross. So, stop. There's a thing called a purse. You could get a backpack purse thing. I have a backpack. You could get a little clutch thingy. Oh, I don't have pockets? Do the clutch thingy and then just keep it on your wrist. Like, it's not... <sighs> I didn't think it was as hard to be a decent person, but it's, it's fucking gross. Like, people do it at conventions, too, like in cosplay. And I completely understand, but at least it's not sweaty in there half the time. If it's a clean place that has really good AC, I still don't do it because I think it's disrespectful because I'm a cashier. Don't do that. I'm not taking your sweaty tip money. No thank you. I did it one con because I didn't know where to put the money. I learned. Get a fanny pack. Better yet, get a fucking fanny pack. They sell really well nowadays. There's a ton of them. Oh, God. Oh, God. When you want us to become educators over the night. So this, this is like a product, right, that someone wants to buy and say they don't know how to use it. First of all, read the damn back or go on the website, scan it, Google it, do whatever you gotta do. We are not experts in 100% of everything we sell. So if you wanna buy a sewing machine, like for your daughter or something, and it's like, oh, like how do they, um, how do they make a sweater? <laughs> or how do they make this shirt? And I'm like, I sew, so this is a bad example. But if I have no idea, we just sell the product, like we can only assume, like, I will help you. Like, I'll say, hey, let's look up a video. Okay, use that. Like, oh, um, how do I use this hair dye? There's instructions inside. If you do not know how to do it, go on, if it's L'Oreal Farias dye, go on Farias website or Farias YouTube channel. Like, we are not experts in 100% of everything we sell. Like, you could ask me, do you know how to use this product? And if I say no, I'm just gonna say, try it out and return it. Like, this applies with me all cosmetics and stuff alike so any like hygiene and cosmetic product you can try out and return because it's FDA you have 30 days to do it so if you buy a foundation and it's not the right color like there are people who ask me for makeup advice and that's fine because I know how to do it but like if you're asking me how to pour concrete I can't fucking help you <laughs> I don't know how to pour concrete and don't be mad at me because I don't know how to pour concrete or change a tire like we're not experts in everything we sell. So. Oh. When you try to play smooth operator on us. So. This is like when people go into a job. Or like someone's place of work. So say you're shopping at Walmart. And I'm working and you're hitting on me. And making me feel uncomfortable. And I don't want to fucking talk to you. Stop. Just. It, it's that simple. Like. What what do people think that it's why do people think it's okay to go in someone's job like bother them like it's fine if it's like hey you're cute whatever and then like you know give me your number and you leave whatever I've had guys literally hit on me for 20 30 minutes and they're following me in the aisle they've done this to my coworker Jenny and then she's just like oh my god this guy's creepy I'm about to call the cops he won't fucking leave <laughs> and I'm like please we'll call the cops and then of course he overheard that and he left like, he had to quote-unquote chase her because that, that ass is so fat and I gotta have that. Like, no, you're a creep. <laughs> 
Like, imagine if I came in your job and bothered you. Would you like that? Probably not, because then we get in trouble for not doing our jobs or this, that, and the other thing. And obviously harassment's a thing, and your management will ask you if you're okay. Like, I've had legit dudes at Target just follow me and hit on me, and then just, like, they don't leave. And it's, like, annoying, because, like, back then I was a more timid, shy little bean. And it'd be like, eh, AP, can you come to aisle um, G7? And then, like, you know, AP will take care of it. Walmart, they laugh at you when you call AP. So it's like, you gotta just handle it yourself. But, like, leave people alone that are working. If someone literally says, dude, I'm not interested and you're interrupting my job. Like, I need to do my job. I got stuff to do. Go away. Like, I have shit to do. Go away. You got rejected. Move on. Leave. Like, it's not hard. Like, you could hit on someone, like, you could say, hey, you're pretty, like, blah, 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 or whatever. If they reject you, just leave them alone. Like, this happens at clubs, this happens at, like, bars, restaurants, conventions, and then they are following you around the convention, and then you gotta get the freaking security on it because they won't leave you alone. Like, it's annoying. Stop doing that. Stop. <laughs> Alright, what's the last one? This article took forever. It literally took, like, two hours. Lastly, when you want a discount because you choose to shop there. Okay, so literally, like, I'll be ringing people out, and I see them every day, and it's like, yeah, I know you shop here every day, and you spend a lot of fucking money. And then they're like, well, I, I pay your bill. You actually don't. Walmart pays me. Do you know where the profit goes to? This store and corporate, like, the district. The district? The district. There we go. We do not get any of your money, Carol. <laughs> Like, you, just because you sent, spend $2,000 here a month, which, Jesus Christ, that's a large number. I'm overshooting that because Walmart people are not spending that much money. But you know what I mean. So if you spend $2,000 here a month, I don't get a single dollar from you. So you do not get a discount just because you're my, like, re reoccurring customer. So, like, stop, like, oh, I shop here all the time. Uh, give me a discount. Like, excuse me? <laughs> Like, do you really think that I'm going to give you a discount just because I see you all the time? I can't even do that with my own friends or my own family members. I can't even ring out my own family members. It's actually against Walmart policy. So, like, stop. <laughs> you are literally just being annoying for no reason and making someone aggravated. Like, again, do you want me to come in your job or your house and make you annoyed? No, didn't think so. So, stop. <laughs> Fucking stop. I have one that's not on here. And I'm going to say it because I just thought of it. So this is 26 things. Not to say to retail people. If it's a holiday and you're shopping on a holiday, like Christmas Eve, for example. I was still a manager then. So everyone and their mother, you know, that rings out is saying like, oh, like, I'm sorry you have to work today. That sucks. Or, oh, I'm glad I'm not you type of thing. Fuck off. None of us want to be here on a holiday. We want to be with our fucking families or just be home and not here. And you're literally the reason we have to be here. Like, people come in saying we should be closed, it's a holiday, and then they're literally shopping there. It's like, well, you're not helping the problem. Because <laughs> you're here spending money, which means that they'll be open. If everyone literally did not come in Christmas Eve or Thanksgiving or Thanksgiving Day, then we're good because then you don't have to deal with, like, the customers and we can actually have a reason to close the store but if you're coming because we need to like have to be open because people come you're not fixing the problem and don't give me your fake sympathy okay I don't want to be here on Christmas Eve I had to be there an extra hour because people just would not leave and then we're like we're closed registers are closed get out like hello like and no one's leaving and we're trying to just get everyone out of the store you're the problem. Like, if you really cared about us that you didn't want us to be open on this holiday, you would not shop on these holidays. There's a thing called online shopping. <laughs> if you did not get your milk or your Lucky Charms or your beer or whatever, and it's Christmas Eve or, like, you're doing all your shopping on Christmas Eve, and then you're trying to tell me you feel sorry for me, you fucking don't. <laughs> you literally just want to shop and you don't care. So why, why act like you care? Like, so that's my extra one please don't shop on holidays and then act like you feel sorry for me because I know damn well you don't all right guys I don't know why my camera went this way that is the end of the video it's really long and I'm sorry <laughs> so
So yeah, please hit that subscribe button and please turn on the notifications. We are trying to get to 100 subs because we want our own custom URL. Which back in the day, you did not need 100 subs to get your own URL. Like you literally just needed to have a YouTube account for 30 days. So, so please subscribe and hit the notifications. We really just want reoccurring viewers because it's annoying. So please, please, please come back. There's more people on this channel. I post on Thursdays, Derek posts on Monday, Nava posts every Friday, and I have other people that don't post right now and we're trying to figure that out. So please come back. Sometimes I post other things. I recently posted a vlog of me going to Worcester, Massachusetts to see real big fish and bowling for soup. I almost said punk rock on a one. <laughs> that should be a band. But anyway, I'm gonna go celebrate 4th of July. I will see all of you next time. Bye.